So uh, without getting into a discussion right now about fluoride in water, we will get to that conversation a little bit later, but in order to frame that properly when we arrive there, could you explain why it is that fluoride is in most toothpaste mm -hmm. when basically we don't have fluoride in our teeth at That's birth, right. but there are other minerals in our teeth that certain toothpastes have. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so why would we give an artificial substance to our teeth? Or maybe you could explain demineralization, remineralization in the context of fluoride mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. these other minerals. So we have hydroxyapatite, which is essentially calcium and phosphorus in our teeth. Uh, our enamel is about 90% hydroxyapatite. The dentin, which is the layer below the enamel, through the enamel, is about 60. And our bone has hydroxyapatite too, about 60%. Our, our limb bones? Mm -hmm. All bone. 60% hydroxyapatite. Yes, which is calcium and phosphorus. Our saliva will also have calcium and phosphorus floating around too. So what fluoride does is it it throws off the hydroxyl group in the in hydroxyapatite and in so it changes it from hydroxyapatite to fluorapatite. So it restructures it a bit. When it does this, the bonds generally are considered stronger um, and the dental crystalline structure is more densely packed. So it's known to be more acid resistant. And so we can get into the history of how they discovered this, but essentially fluoride was put into toothpaste in about the 1960s. It became very popularized. So that is why many dentists love fluoride is that you're using it and it makes your teeth more acid resistant. And also it has some antimicrobial effects too. The issue I have, and we can unpack this more later, is that it's not super selective. So 